Welcome back, everyone, to the Legends Never Die podcast. This is your host, Hunter Bruge. And in the house today, we got our co-host, Dustin and Matt. And we had a great week in football, but first, let's give a quick shout-out to our sponsors, Legend Gear and Apparel and Legend Wooden Artifacts. You can go check them both out at legendgear.co and legendwoodsman.com. Both got great stuff, so go check them out. We'll talk more about the products at the end of the show. But we'll start it off. We had a big week, big game, the Super Bowl. Kind of a letdown, but I'll let Dustin get to it first since his Patriots played his Rams. Yep. Super Bowl number six for my boy Tom. And uh, I thought I thought it was a good game. It was a little low scoring, but, you know, most people complain about low scoring games. Mainly the old people who were mad that the Saints lost. But it's all good. I like the game 13-3. to I told y'all last week Patriots would win by double digits, although I did think it was going to be a little more high scoring. But uh, Belichick was right. That was the best defense he's ever had. So. Super low scoring, 13-3, to like you mentioned. I feel like Saints could have put up more points than both of those. I know Patriots would have scored a lot more if they would have played the Saints, probably 20-27. But I think Saints would have beaten either team, honestly. I don't think so. I think they just two different styles of play. But that's going to take us uh, to our bold takes. And my bold take is that the Patriots win Super Bowl seven next year because they're returning everybody. If Gronk returns, they're going to return everybody. They have 12 picks in this year's draft. That's just a recipe for Belichick to smack somebody. I don't know what I think about that. I'd go as far as saying they don't even win the AFC because I think they're going to come to an end once they no longer get a first-round buy. So if they're not the one or two seed, I think their little reign's going to come to an end. And I think next year, Chiefs get the one seed, maybe even Chargers. So whoever out of that AFC West gets that one seed. And then two seed next year is going to be your Texans. And the reason I say that is my bold take here. Texans are going to go out this year. During the draft, they're going to build their O-line, and they're going to bring in Lev Bell. Bowl take, Lev Bell to the Texans. Let's go. I'd love to see it. Lev Bell's going to Miami. That's a done deal. Nah, but Texans. with that Patriots division, that's an easy six wins, dude. You can't tell it. Tell me they're not going to get the second seed when you already give them they six wins. They barely got it this year. Five wins, Matt. We're going to oh, lose you're, one game they'll to They'll lose to Miami once every yeah. year. Jay Cutler will come out of retirement, come out there uh, nursing home and Yeah, it will be Brady. cutting up on them boys. But, yeah, my bold take is going to be the 76ers are going to go win the East this year after adding Tobias Harris. Once they get J.J. Reddit back, they might have the best starting five in the East. Oh, they do, for no doubt. I don't know, though, now. I don't know. The There's start- a lot of NBA trade moves, and we'll get to those later on in the show. But we want to start with the Super Bowl recap. Me and Dustin talked a little on it. Julian Edelman, of course, did his thing. Ten catches, 149 scrimmage yards. He did real well. Covered player props. Everybody took him, I'm pretty sure. I didn't. Sony Michelle did his thing. 95 yards on the ground and a touchdown. Should have been the MVP. Nah, Edelman was MVP, man. Dude, he, he scored the only touchdown. I don't okay, care. Okay, but still, Edelman set him up every drive. He got probably every single first down just about that they got. Except they could that not one. guard that man, bro. He was out there breaking ankles. Y'all saw Adonik and Sue said they limited Julian Edelman. Like, y'all limited, limited him. Limited him to 10-plus catches and 140 yards. They, they, their game plan, Wade Phillips said the game plan was to take away James White. I told y'all. This was the one that James White wasn't going to get them catches. Yeah. Brady really just threw check downs all game, though, and then threw that bomb to Gronkowski that really, really? put him che- over the he top. He didn't get the check down. James White had one catch. Yeah, I'm saying the check downs to Edelman. Eight out of the ten of them catches were probably five yards or less. I saw two downfield. And then the Gronk bomb. He hit Gronk dude. downfield multiple dude, times. Dude, that pass to Gronk was yeah, beautiful. Yeah, was slick with it. And I was screaming hype. I'm sure y'all oh, were yeah, too. Yeah, of course. I was because Sonny Michelle was on the one-yard line. So we all took a bet. You could take first player to score in the Super Bowl, and it was a plus 500. Dustin had it a plus 800, I believe. First. Yeah, because I had first touchdown and Patriots to win. Yeah, so we all took Sonny Michelle to score the first touchdown of the game. None of us knew that it was going to come midway through the third quarter, the first score I of the game. I thought it was going to be first drive. Yeah. 
a lot of us thought it was going to be a much closer game and better game, but that, Edelman did his thing, and it poses the question. I laughed at first when I heard it. Is he a Hall of Famer? 100%. No. You want to know why? Why? PEDs. He failed drug tests this year. Oh, well. Yeah, I Who think cares? that may hold him out, but aside from that, I said no at first, and then I got to thinking about it. His rings he has with Brady, his 100-catch seasons – his Super Bowl performances and playoff performances in general. Yeah. Tied all-time league leader for six 100-yard postseason games. He's second in yards in the postseason, too, only yeah. behind Jerry, Jerry Rice. Rice. Yeah, Jerry Rice, T.O., and impressive. him all 600-yard games in the playoffs. That's tough. And he's just a winner. I mean, think of la- uh, two years ago. I think I said last year. Because Patriots are in it every year. It's hard to keep up You're with You're talking the about the catch against the, the catch Falcons. The catch against the Falcons, yes. Patriots would not have been able to come back and win that game without that unreal catch. Craziest catch I've ever seen. I don't know. But Edelman Hall of Fame, we got two yeses and one no. He is a roid monkey. That He's and at ability, like, off stats and all that, yes. But I don't think they're let him in because of PDs. And I got to say this before we transition out of the Super Bowl. I think this boy Robert Kraft is a little strange, bro. Oh, he him was t- and Brady after the he game. He tried to kiss not, Brady. Not just him. Listen, he kisses all the players. I was watching some interviews. I watch a lot of shit when I'm bored. I was watching the Hernandez trial, and he was uh, whatever. They were asking him questions for questioning and all that. Uh, the day it happened, y'all remember all the media showed up, and Hernandez was at the locker room working out. And they were asking Kraft about that day, and he was like, it was just a normal day at the office. Came in, talked to Aaron, asked him what was going on, all this. And then I hugged and kissed him like we always do. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. He said hugged and kissed? And then I watched a couple other interviews of him talking about players, and he's Dude. kissing all his players. I told y'all that they after the game, when him and Brady guard. met in the middle, I said, Yo, did they just kiss at the 50-yard line? That boy tried to kiss Brady. The I'm lips. telling you, he did. <laughs> Kraft's boy. into that. I don't know. That boy needs to stick to Kraft mac and cheese and quit macking on the players. I don't know. Maybe it's, the, maybe it's the love, the Patriot way. Yeah, the Patriot way. No no telling what they do with the cheerleaders. Yeah, Boston strong, huh? Yep. But, all right, we'll transition out of that Super Bowl recap. All in all, it was a good game. If you like defense, so 10% of people in the world were hyped up. I thought it was refreshing, honestly. And did y'all see some of the commercials? A couple of them cracked me up. A couple of them were pretty uh, attractive to to revealing. The Michelob Gold commercial, Michelob is now offering organic beer. So for all you organic freaks, there y'all go. Y'all could drink y'all's beer again. Hey, so and one little note on the Super Bowl being low scoring. If you're above the age of 40, you are you always say, back in my day, this never would have happened. We never would have let a team score 30 back in my day. All the old people on Facebook were like, man, what a boring game, 13-3, to 3, how, what a boring game. But they're like, yeah, back in my day, the 85 Bears, you wouldn't even score a touchdown on them. Probably not. All them old heads like defense, and speaking of old heads, and then they were complaining. Heads, did y'all see the commercial of Brian Urlacher? Or was oh, that yeah. at the NFL? With hair? Or, Brian Urlacher now has hair for the first time ever. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta tell you, he didn't look near as scary as he used to. Frank now has hair for the first time ever. But all right, guys, we'll move out of that Super Bowl recap, and we'll talk a little bit about the NFL honors. My man Steve Harvey, first of all, the host, the man with the most. That boy went up there and did his thing. I was really impressed. He went out there and cracked jokes. The whole first 15 minutes was a complete joke. He proceeded to tell all the players, he was like, there's only one reason we're all here tonight, and everybody's like, hey, man, brother, all this. He's like, it's because none of us can beat that damn Tom Brady. And everybody, like some players look serious, you know. Aaron Rodgers always trying to be serious, and Mahomes looked a little serious, like shaking their head in luck a couple of the players that he's beat out over the years. But it was funny. He went on to crack more jokes about the Patriots and how he can't wait for them to be done. He's a big Cleveland fan, so he gave his props to his Cleveland players. He said some funny stuff about Mayfield, of course. Y'all need to go check it out, though. The NFL honors were lit. So we'll start it off with our MVP, Dustin's favorite player in the league, Patty Mahomes. 
No surprise. I called it from week one. Ever since I seen him throw that bomb to Tyree Kill in the preseason, I've been uh, riding Pat Mahomes. He was that guy, I mean, 5,000 yards, a couple hundred yards away from the most yards in history. In his 50, first year of 50 starting. 50 touchdowns, a couple touchdowns away from the most in history. And he's our age. Yeah, it's ridiculous. That'd be like me out there slinging 50 touchdowns and almost beating the Patriots. Better luck <laughs> next year. Hey. Hats off to Mahomes' good season. I saw a stat. Mahomes was 27th out of 30 qualifying quarterbacks and passes over 30 yards down the field in accuracy. I can't believe that. That's Probably crazy. because you take but the he throws, most in the league. He he throws like 10 a game and completes like I wonder one. If you would, yeah, that I, I wonder one, if you though. would look at how many he's completed, not percentage, but in comparison to uh, the 30 quarterbacks in the league, and I bet it's almost the top. I don't know. They yeah, said their main 100%. priority They said their main priority is re-signing Tyreek Hill, but they're saying they're going to give Mahomes $200 million. They're not going to be able to do both. They I mean, they got a couple years to buy right Mahomes. The dome. No, I think their main priority, though, is bailing Kareem Hunt out of prison. No. I think that's their main <laughs> y'all priority. Ain't, y'all ain't heard, huh? Kareem Hunt to the Bears is almost a lock. Oh, gosh. Matt Nagy. I figured he'd go to the Patriots. Matt Nagy but. talks to Kareem Hunt every day. Every day since he's got in trouble, he's talked to him. Didn't they try to bring up some, like, what's it called? I don't even know what it's called anymore. We got a new one under the domestic violence. Uh, Antonio Brown fake news already looked way into it. You didn't You didn't see? They came out with a report. Go look on ESPN right now. Uh, the police report and police write up said that he pushed his baby mama down on the ground, yeah, was screaming I, at her. I listened to a lot of it and watched a lot of it. It's fake news. And he's even about to get full custody of his kid too. The woman's supposedly crazy. I don't want to say too much and has some legal ramifications. Somebody coming at the legend group trying to sue us. Some a- Antonio Brown baby mama, <clears throat> baby mama drama. But off of that. <laughs> NFL honors Pat Mahomes, that guy. Did y'all watch it or no? The highlights. No, Paul I didn't Rudd, watch it. Uh, he's a big time actor, you know who he is. But he's up there and he's a huge Chiefs fan and he's like giving the award out and he's like, here's our three, here's our three guys Drew Brees, Gurley, and Mahomes. They showed the clips of all their highlights, showed their numbers and all this. And he's like talking about how much he likes the Chiefs and he's like, I could not be, I can't be biased, so I can't even give this award out. And he turned around to walk off stage. In his suit jacket was a Mahomes jersey on the back of it. It had stitched into his suit Mahomes number 15 like his jersey would look. And he turned around, and that's how he won the award. It was pretty cool. But it was a good moment for Mahomes. He went up there and gave his Kermit the Frog speech, did his thing. He actually sounded like he'd been practicing. Of course, he knew he was going to win, so he had a little time to come up with something that wasn't too cheesy. But he did his thing, and then our defensive rookie of the year, Defensive Rookie of the Year, Aaron, that man, Donald. That boy is a beast. 22 and a half sacks this year. You know what's crazy? Almost double-digit forced fumbles. You know who he didn't sack? TB12. Tom Brady. That boy did sling him around a couple times, though. Yep, should have got Tom caught. Tom Brady for... was taking damage that first quarter, bro. He was getting slung around like a little rag doll that he is, but. He kind of shook back and did his thing, but they was getting at him. Yep, when he had to, he led that drive, and then he, when he didn't have to, he led that drive, stuck that dagger in him. Did y'all see Belichick when he was trying to go for it? Tom Brady, they had Tom Brady mic'd up for the Super Bowl. They, uh, Tom Brady goes to the sideline. He's like, "Kick the field goal, Bill," and Bill's like, "I want, I think we need to go for it." Tom's like, "Why the hell do we need to go for it? Kick the field goal, Bill," and Bill was like, turns around, he looks at the, uh, he looks at Goskowski, he says. We're going to kick the field goal. Dude comes out there and makes a field goal. And Belichick walks by Brady and he was like, you got lucky. You got lucky, Tom. Oh, gosh. But, all right, yeah, Aaron Donald did his thing. There was really no debate on him winning that. The next closest player was Khalil Mack, who was an absolute monster. Who had 11 and a half sacks. Let's remember. Way overrated. Let's remember that. Uh, he Raiders, was out a couple games. Hey, guys, but Raiders got the 25th pick for him. So, I mean, I think that's a fair trade. 25th pick for Khalil Mack. Crazy. But uh, then we moved into our next category was offensive and defensive rookies of the year. And we had offensive rookie of the year, Saquon Barkley. Matt and Saquon Barkley kind of look alike. 
Yeah, he wishes. They got the same amount of hair. Saquon Barkley's girlfriend kind of looks like mine, so. Oh Have y'all seen God. her? Mm-mm. Ooh, she's better looking than Baker Mayfield's girlfriend. But, touching on Saquon, I'm still, I still think he's the best running back in the NFC East, by far. Zeke, you're past your prime. The new king is here. Bro, past his prime, he's in his fourth season. I, no, I'm not. <laughs> he's still going to be a beast. That's not what I mean, but. Uh. How many receiving yards did he have? Over a thousand? Did no, he break no, that? No, it was like seven hundred. No. Seven hundred. Eight hundred. But still, I remember he was. He on was pace at two thousand scrimmage yard. He was the only one this year, wasn't he? Aside from Gurley. No. <clears throat> Who else? McCaffrey, boy. McCaffrey, yeah. McCaffrey's oh, a yeah. savage. But yeah, I agree with you there, Matt. Best running back in the NFC. I think so. I think he's better than Gurley going forward. He's going to be that guy in fantasy. He might be a number one overall pick. Oh, I would love that. I'll, I'll take I remember him laughing one. at our draft when someone took him like seventh overall in fantasy football. I was like, they look really, like a genius. Y'all really trust a rookie Tom, quarterback? Tommy, you know why he drafted him? Auto. Auto pick. Auto pick. Tommy, remember, missed the first two rounds of the draft. Gets auto picked. Michael Thomas and Saquon happens. Barkley. That's why I like live drafts. Anybody who's hardcore fantasy football, go do live drafts. Way more intense. Way better. I ain't going to lie, the funnest part of football season is the fantasy draft for our big league. 20 oh. teams, I like $180 a team. Boy, Matt, y'all's teams won the Super Bowl too, or y'all no. lost this year, huh? Yeah, we lost in the Super two Bowl. Two years in a row, Matt and then made it to the Super Bowl in a 20-team, $180 team league. I get so mad thinking about fantasy this year because I was literally Julio Jones' bad, one bad week in the last, like, 12 weeks of the season away from winning the Super Bowl. But, all right, out of that, we had Saquon, our offensive rookie of the year. He did his thing. Baker Mayfield, a very close second. And then third, that uh, Lindsey, who also had a great year that gets overshadowed by Saquon's big numbers. somebody was just that much better. I can't can't believe believe I was that high on – Royce Freeman. Royce Freeman Freeman in preseason. We all were. He was going to be crazy. Yeah, so we had that, and then we had Defensive Rookie of the Year. Here's where a lot of people didn't know what was going to happen. We had Darius Leonard, first-team All-Pro linebacker, one of the best linebackers in the league for the Colts, and he's a rookie. He was a third-round pick. There was a lot of questions around him whether he was going to be good or not, and he ended up being great. Proved the doubters wrong. But you had him and then the All-Pro safety, Derwin James, out of Florida State. Who would you think was going to win this, Dustin? We know the outcome ended up being Leonard. 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 Yeah. Leonard. He had 160 plus tackles this year. Made it to the second round of the playoffs. Was the real core of that Indianapolis run D that was actually pretty pretty damn good. But Derwin James, it's just big name, I guess. Everybody wanted to see him win. He's he's always been that guy. And I forgot who was third in the running. Do you remember? Maybe Denzel Ward from That's Cleveland. Who it was. Yeah. Denzel Ward. Denzel Ward from Cleveland. No, 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 no. Bradley Chubb. Bradley Chubb had like was 13. Chubb? He had like 13 sacks. Damn, yeah, good pick, Denver. Denver got a monster right there. Y'all's offense is just trash. Till Peyton, this year, they may call Peyton Manning out of the Hall of Fame. Peyton Manning wants the Broncos to draft Daniel Jones. First round. Of Duke. That wouldn't that be a bad pick. A so, what else we got? That was our offensive and defensive rookie of the years and offensive and Walter defense. Peyton, man of the year. Man of the year. Who was the Who man was of the it? year? Chris Long. Chris Long. Oh, Chris Long. Yeah. yeah. I hate that little hard. But yeah, he's still a good cat. He's a good guy. He does a lot for the community and stuff from what I've seen. Yeah. And what else we have? Most improved. Andrew Luck, that guy. No, that's comeback player of the year. Comeback player of the year, yeah. That's what it was. Yep. Andrew Luck. They should have been if your there guy was since a, like week four. If there no, I've always liked Luck. I drafted him last year in fantasy, and he so didn't did play I. all year. And the dude sitting in the front of the fantasy thing, <clears throat> fantasy room, laying our big draft. I picked Andrew Luck. He was supposed to come back after week two. He said, I just want to let you know, he ain't playing all year. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta Who be Carl. Talking about? Nope. David Hanchy. Oh, Carl's, yeah. Carl's brother-in-law. So yeah, That's funny. Yeah. yeah, what else awards did we have? Coach of the Year, we had Matt Nagy. Matt, you could say something on that since your Shoot. name's also hey, Matt. Hey, hold on. You forgot one. I, I'm giving this award out. All most right. most improved, Drew Brees. <laughs> Psych. Hilarious. 
But no, uh, touching on Matt Nagy, I mean, they put a, who all was on the list for Coach of the Year? Uh, no. Yeah, it Nagy, was... Nagy, the Colts coach, uh, Mark Rich, and uh, Mark, how do you, what's his Reich. name? Reich. I think that's how you say it, Reich. Yeah, and then, or and then I think Andy Reid was up there again. Oh, yeah, Matt Nagy was the clear choice. Took the Bears to the playoffs at a 12-4 and four season and was a it's missed field goal away. It's a very tough division, one of the best divisions yeah. in my opinion. I remember I told you, I was like week five. I was like, the Bears are going to win the division. Dustin looks at me sideways. Bro, the Vikings are going to smash them. They See, should. we've seen the Bears, though. You know, they got super hot. Their stock was going crazy up. Then they slid a little right before playoff season. That slide always tended to be road games. So if they're able to work on that this off season, get Trubisky a little more in there, maybe get Lev Bell like Dustin said, that would put them over the no, top for get sure. Kareem Hunt. No, yeah, or Kareem, Kareem Hunt. Hunt. That's who you said was going there. Yeah, they need That's a right. they need a better running back. Howard done got the Andy Lacey. He ain't going Unfortunately, to the they don't have a first round draft pick because they got Khalil Mack for the twenty fifth pick. So I mean. I'd take that trade off. Yeah, if I'm I were taking them. that. That still cracks me up. First round pick. Yeah, that was dumb. But all right, I think that was all of the NFL awards. I believe game changer award was Shaquem Griffin. I like that pick also. There's a lot of small awards. The game Moment of the award. year. Hold Moment up. of the year. Hold Y'all up. know what it was. What is Probably the, the miracle against, against the yeah. Patriots. What was it? Nope. Aaron Rodgers week one versus the Bears. This boy had the most trash season of his career. And still after he award. talked all this hype that he was going to be MVP. an MVP. And they won what? A, re- a career low five games? Were they five and 11? No, they won like eight. No, they didn't. They did not win eight games. They were seven and nine then. There's no way they won eight games. He was absolute trash this year, though. I know the team was bad. Defense was bad. But still, for that to be the moment of the year, the, the moment of the, the year, year should have been now. the moment of the year should have been when Tom Brady drove him down the field against the Chiefs, whipped him, then drove him back down the field again just a mere few minutes later. And beat him. Nah, the moment of the year, if it wasn't play, it sucks it wasn't playoffs included. Moment of the year definitely goes to Los Angeles Rams and the referees, bro. Be serious. That oh, was moment man, of the year. Here we go. Or that. That was Mer- game changer of the year. That was BS of the year. Or that Kenyon Drake play against the Patriots. That that could have been moment of the year. I think it was. It was in there. It was in the running. Yeah, it won something. Play of the year. Yeah, Rogers was moment of the year. Something. It was a different award. Yeah. Took a win off Tom's career. All right, guys, it's unfortunate that our seasons came to an end, but we have a lot to look forward to, starting with the NFL draft and the offseason free agency and everything. So right now, on the clock, Kingsbury, new coach for Arizona. What's he going to do with that first pick? You better go get Bosa. No, I don't I think want Bosa so. number one overall. A lot of people are saying he's not going to go one overall anymore. I think he's going to lot of people, everything that a I've lot seen of people are indicates. Saying, a lot of people are saying Josh Allen's going to go number one overall. The guy from Kentucky. Yeah, he's solid, but he's, I think. He's, he's a faster version of Bosa. That's why. I think the name, bro. It's like a purebred yeah. dog. Like a strict bloodline. You know a Bosa's going to be a beast. So, yeah, yeah I'm taking and Bosa be hurt at one. All the time. But the only condition that I would not take him at one would be a trade-up by another team or – a trade down for them a little. That would be smart, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, and Arizona gets <clears throat> Kyler Murray and dumps. Jaguars to the one to get Dwayne Haskins. Yeah. No. Kyler, dude, Kyler, Murray, Haskins, Kyler Murray to Arizona is what, what I like. Here's, here's what I can tell one. you. The one I'm thing in the draft that's, that's for sure. Happen. The one thing that's for sure in the draft is Dwayne Haskins is going to the Giants. Unless and, the Jags want to trade up. At all costs, no. They're not. I believe that, that that could be a I possibility. The, the but Jags I think, would rather Flacco or Foles. I think Arizona, though, really takes Kyler Murray. No joke. Same situation last year with Mayfield. I know it's a little different. Both Osmond winners, though. Both small quarterbacks. All that similar. I just but hope. at the beginning of the talks, right as the season ended, as it is now, everybody said Mayfield a potential first-rounder. Murray is a potential first-rounder. Okay. 
Then as it kept going and progressing, they are like, okay, maybe he's a top 15 guy. Murray, same way, they're going to say the same stuff. Maybe he's a top 15. Eventually ends up going number one overall, Baker Mayfield. So I think the same could happen. Rosen is not the answer. He is not the chosen Rosen like the Red Sea thinks over there. So they need a new squad. Go ahead and get your boy Kyler Murray with the number one. They got to go ahead and get that offensive line number one. But, yeah, I see them trading down, really. They got a lot of money, too, don't they? They can make some big moves. Fitzgerald. Who wants to go to? Who wants to go to? Who wants to go to Arizona? Though, really. Yeah, I know the city in general. Especially when you're born over there. Especially when your best player wants to leave. So. Your best player is Fitzgerald. It's Patrick Peterson. Nah, it's David Johnson. (laughs) Patrick Peterson, nine seasons, nine super, nine seasons, nine Pro Bowls. The best player on Arizona team, we all know, is David Johnson's wife. We've talked about this before. Yeah. <laughs> but all right, so number two pick is either one of the two that Dustin said. I know my pick was a little out there. Bowl take, kind of <laughs> Kyler Murray, number one. But Bosa and Allen, that's the two big guys this year. So one, two, I think one of them goes if the other doesn't. You agree? Yeah, probably. Who is it again? San Fran. That's no, a good pick for San Fran. San Fran don't need pass rush. They got DeForest, Buckner, Solomon, Thomas. Their pass rush is fine. But They're still, up. the picks there. They need they need something in the secondary or linebacker. Devin White, their, then. Their linebackers are weak. They got Devin White, the number eight in linebacker. I got D-line going first five picks, pretty much. Four or five picks. Oh, stop that. Come on now. So, number three pick. Who's, who's up? Jets. Definitely need a pass rush. They're going to get Williams from Alabama is what I'm seeing. That's what I'm liking there. I don't know. I like the kid. I think he's third. I think he's behind Allen and Bosa, as mentioned. And then Raiders got a four spot. It's their year. They got all these picks. They're going to have to make big moves. They need literally every position. Except O-line. Yeah, their O-line's pretty solid. Every position on defense. They need an elite pass rusher. Remember, guys, that's what Gruden wants yeah. so bad. Trades Khalil Mack, then begs for an elite pass rusher. He'll get on one now. with that first uh, He'll, He's going to grab Ed Oliver. Oliver that high? I've seen him trending low. Even into the he, team. That's because he – a lot of what people about, think he's a cancer to a team. What about uh, the kid from Michigan? Gary uh, – Rashawn, yeah, Rashawn, yeah, Rashawn Gary. Gary. I think he, he's up he's there. He's pretty good, but I, I mean, think he's even over Oliver and what I've been seeing. I don't know. But I think a good pick for San Fran would be, since you said they do need linebackers, our boy from LSU, Devin White. I truly think he was the best player in college football last year, so he's going to transition over into the NFL well, as all LSU players seem to do, especially at that position. So I would take him high. He's he's top prospect in my opinion, Devin White. He's best linebacker available. So, all right, we'll move into a little quarterback action. So, sixth pick, New York. Haskins. We think we think Haskins yeah. is going there for sure. It only makes sense. Haskins, Odell, and Saquon, the future. Then you just got to get all offensive line. You got to build. Nate Soldier was not the answer. Yeah, he's <laughs> not even. He close. was a product of Belichick's system. So, so that's what we got there. A six spot going there. First quarterback off the board. If something crazy doesn't happen, expect to see a trade up as we get closer. Though quarterbacks are always low till it comes down to it. A lot of these mock drafts will change, and our opinions will change as pro days and combines come. But the next pickup, we got Jags. I think Jags got to go with a quarterback, too. I think it may be trade, uh, like a bunch of trades being swapped around on that day. Giants are going to be worried about Jags trading up, so they're going to try to trade up, all this. But Jags definitely need a QB. Y'all agree? Yeah, they'll get – I think – I'm thinking Drew Locke for them if they – if they, because Drew Locke's a safer pick than Daniel Jones, but Daniel Jones apparently has tons of upside. If you draft a Drew Locke, would he start the first year? No over, doubt, over Bortles, of course. Or do you go and get Kessler. a free agent as well? No. I think the best possible thing that Jaguars could do is try to get Nick Foles for the low, for the third round pick that a lot of teams are saying he's worth. Give up your third round and get Nick Foles. You got to forget it. I mean, we're quick to forget. Jaguars, one season ago, 365 days ago, 
we're playing the Patriots in the AFC Championship to go to the Super Bowl. And we're up twenty-one we know they, to nothing. Yeah, they look like a complete different team now, but the defense is still there. They just need a leader. So Nick Foles, or you got to draft a guy they, right here. And I'm, I'd say Nick Foles, in a third round pick, and still draft your guy with your first round. It's pick. bad. It's bad when you have quarterback, a quarterback competition. It's bad when you. When before the season starts, your quarter, your cornerback, your star player, your best player on your team, comes out and says, I, "Oh, this quarterback's trash. This quarterback's good. This quarterback's beast." And then he says about his own quarterback, "He does what he's got to do." That's how you know. That's how you know. That ain't the guy for your team. Yeah, there's issues in Jacksonville big time. Of course, Blake Bortles is an issue. He's that kid that keeps crapping his pants in preschool. <laughs> But Bortles is trash. They got a sloppy uh, staff up there. They need to do some things in that front office. And I've even heard a move for the team. I think that would be their best bet. Go ahead and move to London. I know none of the players want to no. play there. But let's get an international team. I'm down for that. I'm 100% down for an you international send, team. Uh, Leonard Fournette and them boys to London. Come on, bro. Yeah, you know they, what? Party. they already what? partying in Duval He's County. He's going to demand a trade so fast. You know, you already saw – what uh, what Barry Church and them did last time they were in London. They all got locked up. But, yeah, so we got Jacksonville there. Then the next picks, we got uh, Detroit, Broncos in the mix, Buffalo up top. I think Buffalo should have tanked a little more and got a better pick because they were out of it right from the get. And then they wanted – they saw that Josh Allen was pretty good, and they won too many games that they shouldn't have won, well, really. Well, if you're not going to draft a quarterback, there's really no point in tanking, if you think about it. Their I defense, think there's a pretty big drop they off don't after need, those top five, but, though, so I think I believe there is. But they definitely don't need defense because that's not a main priority. So, if your main priority is not quarterback and it's not defense, you can wait on o -line. running back or you can wait on O-line or you can wait on a uh, wide receiver. I think they need a wide receiver. I think right here is where DK Metcalf goes. And number nine? Or nope. trade down a little and get him? Nope, right here. I'd even possibly trade down. A lot of the mocks I've seen him, they got him, them taking the best tackle or the best O-lineman available. Y'all want me to y'all me to tell y'all tell y'all who DK Metcalf's going to be, be in uh, the NFL? Who? going to be a mixture of Dez Bryant and Alshon Jeffrey. Yeah, Metcalf's beast, the boy from Ole Miss, he's the other huge. Ole Miss receiver. AJ Brown, he's yeah, he's go also going round. going up high, maybe even going on a first day. But yeah, we got Detroit. They need everything. They're awful. They're in the mix. There, you got Broncos, who are always one player away. But you never know. That division's getting so tough. It really doesn't matter. If I'm in that division, you know you're playing Mahomes two times a year, Carr two times a year, and Phillip Rivers for the next couple years. So I'm going secondary if I'm Denver this year. Their defense is already pretty built. Add a good piece to that secondary and get your boy from LSU, Greedy Williams. Best cornerback on the board, LSU. See, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go a little way away from you. I'm going to say Daniel Jones right here. And if not Daniel Jones, I'm saying Buda Baker. So Daniel Georgia. Jones, the quarterback from Duke. He's a solid prospect. They got him on the boards behind Haskins and Locke. Cause a lot even have him above Locke, but not above Haskins in a lot of power rankings if you, that I've if seen. If you think about it, really, they're going to feel pressured to take a quarterback if two quarterbacks are already off the board. Because so, you know you're not going to come back around to Kyler Murray. Because with, with the 32nd pick, or what, yeah, 32nd pick, the Patriots are drafting a quarterback. They don't need anything. They're gonna. They got three years to groom this guy, whoever it is. Might as well get Daniel Jones. Kyler Murray's not gonna sit for three years. I can tell you that right now. So they're not gonna want to get Kyler Murray. So, really, in all honesty, they're probably gonna take quarterback. Maybe they're no because he'll be too old. I was gonna say maybe Will Greer, but Will Greer's <laughs> Will Greer will be too old by the time he's ready to play. But. Will Greer's about Peyton Manning's age, I believe. He's probably already regressing as a quarterback. <laughs> he ain't even got drafted. Yet. Yeah, he'll be chill he'll be, out, uh, chill. Uh, that's funny. He'll be all right. Let's chill on the uh, West Virginia stuff, Matt. It's getting butt hurt over here. He quit wearing his West Virginia hoodie. You noticed? 
he ain't oh, been wearing I it as much anymore. Them right now. They disappointed <laughs> me. But I think I, I like that no at ten. Daniel Jones may take Denver may take him as QB. I think if not there, the next team that I see available that needs a quarterback that probably would move on Jones is going to be Washington. Alex Smith's oh, out of yeah. there. I mean, Mark Sanchez, is that your guy? Never. Not even close. They may go after something in free agency, but there ain't you much get available. Blacko or something. Yeah. So I see Daniel Jones maybe even going to Washington. Darius Geis will be back in the mix. He got a good O line there. Could be a good move for him. They could be on the rise. Washington, I mean, they started off the season, what, 5-1? and one? Yeah. Led that NFC for a, a couple that games there. Injury. Yeah, I know he's going to Washington. Who? Kyler Murray. Oh goodness. That's the that's the fit for him right there. Watch watch how Gruden plays. Watch how Jay Gruden plays. That's how they do it. But all right, so we got him. He's another top prospect up there. We got the kid from Clemson, Wilkins. He's a beast. He fits anywhere in my top twenty. Then we got the second best cornerback, in my opinion, Byron Jones from Washington. Dude, Buda Baker's the best cornerback. I don't know, bro. I got greedy. greedy. I got greedy and Byron William, Byron Murphy over him. The dude won the Nate. The uh. So Buda Baker to Pittsburgh. That's what I was about to say. Pittsburgh, a big team up there that's going to be in contention. You also got Minnesota and Cleveland with detrimental picks. They're both going for a playoff spot. So. Everybody there needs to get a good pick. I don't know what Cleveland oh, really needs at this point. More defense for sure. Cleveland? Yeah. I'd beat that D up a little more. It's a it's Dude, a defensive it heavy first round last this year. Year too. Yeah, they weren't bad. They, they got, really, definitely got worse as the season went. They needed a secondary guy too. But the uh pick who's the other team you said? Pittsburgh. Minnesota. Minnesota? Offensive line. 100%. Got to go O-line. Yeah, they got them going O-line in most of the mock drafts I've seen, taking one of the best offensive tackles available. You also got Alabama's big O-tackle that's up there. He's going to go quick. Jonah Williams. Williams? Yeah, he's going to be a good pick. They got Cleveland getting him. That'd be a nice pick replacing Joe Thomas right there. Hard to fill those shoes, but we'll see. Then we move into our playoff teams. We got... Seattle, they could use some more secondary for sure. Their guy's going to be gone before we know it, Earl Thomas. So they need to fill his spot. The safety from Bama is going to be there. He's good. A couple other good safeties, D, D uh, backs. The kid from Georgia is good, Baker. I've heard a lot of him, watched him quite a bit this year. Buddha. Buddha. I don't see Buddha going first round in a lot of the stuff I've looked at, but he is a beast. What other playoff teams you think that could use somebody? The Hoodads definitely need someone. <laughs> New Orleans needs linebacker. Oh, yeah. New Orleans doesn't have a first-round pick this year. That's right. I forgot. Yeah, the Saints are screwed. Yeah, we're stuck with the team we got now, but I think it's enough to Dallas, get it done. Dallas. Who got the Saints pick? Who uh, got that when they traded for Davenport? Traded up to get him. The, I mean, traded, Yeah. I forgot who it was. Uh, That's why we need Aaron here. He would know. Was it Bengals or somebody? I don't know. Look look at the draft order. I don't know. Oh, Green Bay. Yeah, Green Bay. That's what it was. Yeah. So, Green Bay got two first-rounders. They definitely need to capitalize. A lot of people think they may go offense, give uh, Rodgers another weapon, get a good tight end. They need one for they sure. They need to go defense. They're going defense with that first pick for sure. I think they kind of get it, did a good job of knowing they were out of it and started to lose. They got the 12th pick. Probably going to get that bad boy from Florida, Polite. That boy's nice. I don't know. I think he's top 10 on a lot of boards. But I think that's about it. We'll see a lot of change between now and then. We got a couple other receivers going high that we think, a couple big-name players. But we'll keep you all updated on the draft as it gets closer. Patriots are going to draft a new quarterback maybe for the future. I don't know who's going to be available at that spot, but they need to start looking. Tom Brady, I don't think he's making it through another season. Sorry. Yeah, we said that four seasons ago, didn't we? <laughs> Since then. So we'll give our top five for the NFL next year. Go ahead and give an early prediction of what we think, and then we'll transition into basketball, all these trades going on and all this stuff and NBA. But my top five for next year is going to be Chiefs number one. 
I think Mahomes, the MVP, is going to have a great season built off that, and they're going to end up beating the Patriots finally. And hopefully that will be the end of that. So I got Chiefs at number one, Saints at number two, same team, bouncing back. Going to be a fire under them. I think they're going to have another great season, 12, 13 wins. So they're going to be there when it's all said and done. Rams at three, Patriots at four. The old heads will still get there to the AFC Championship. And then Texans at five. Texans may overtake Patriots in the near future. I got Texans at five, a little biased, and I'm anticipating some big moves this offseason for the Texans. So, that's my top five. You ready? Go ahead, Matt. Mm, I got Chiefs at one, Rams two, Patriots three, Saints four. And I'm going to try to throw you all off with this one. And then I'm going to go Bears five. I like the Bears. No, I, mean, I respect it. I respect us and have maybe the Chargers at five. Oh, man, I forgot about Nobody them, too. Nobody with the Chargers? Yep. I'm going to go got? Patriots one. If you don't have Saints, then stop. Patriots one, Chiefs two, Saints three, Rams four, 49ers five. Ooh, I like the 49ers <laughs> throw in. The 49ers plug, the Jimmy G plug. Think about it. They're going to get Jimmy G back. Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown. McKinnon. Kittle. Build the defense. The O-line's already good. The number two overall pick. Yeah. It makes sense for 49ers to make a run. The odds makers already have them, I think, like fifth, sixth best odds to win it all, surprisingly. Oh. Have them above big-name franchises like Pittsburgh and Dallas, stuff like that. Oh, them boys ain't winning. Dallas, that they're going to fall off after hey, one Hey, I year. bet you that's who I'll put my money on next year, really. The 49ers? Yep, just because their, it'll be a great offense, futures bet. I their mean, offense is going to be stupid good. You're not going to be able to stop them. They got Shanahan. Yeah, you got a point. I got AFC. I got Saints and 49ers in the championship. Nah, really, I got Saints-Texans. Y'all know who should be starting for the 49ers? Uh-oh. Colin Kaepernick. <laughs> over Jimmy G, yep. Colin Kaepernick over Tom Brady, guys. He should be a starter. Be for real. Yep. Yep. Saints the McCourty need to, brothers. Saints, please go draft Cap or go trade for Kaepernick. Hey, he will start to, over Breeze. I hate to say it, but the McCourty brothers, y'all are good, but y'all are out. Y'all ain't going to visit the White House. Y'all are out. Done. Nope. Scratch them. Yeah, that stuff's dumb. I don't even want to get political on this one. I've been getting too political. Been having some viewers. Uh, you look like Nancy. Express their emotions. <laughs> Stop it. You look like her. Boy, you look like Hillary Clinton. Stop it. <laughs> no, Dustin looks like that damn Chris Christie from Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, your ass looks like Ted Cruz. I don't know what you laughing at. Oh, the Zodiac off. Killer, <laughs> Ted Cruz. <laughs> But all right, guys, we'll bring it into NBA. We'll leave it there for NFL. We'll see y'all next year on that. We'll still talk about it here and there, but our main sport's gone. I don't know what I'm going to do these next 30 weeks of my life. But all right, we'll start it off with NBA. And about two hours ago now in our time, we had the trade deadline ended, a lot of big moves. We didn't see Anthony Davis trade like we all expected and wanted. No real super team caliber trades, but there was some good moves that improved teams, especially out east. So we'll start off with Dustin on that. Give us one trade. We'll go around the board and we'll just give our best trade. My my, I like the trade Tobias Harris to the Sixers. Yeah, it it takes away depth from the Sixers, like big time depth from the Sixers, because now that's too big. They've made the two biggest trades of the year. Sixers are all in. They said we're done trusting the process. The process ain't going to work because Simmons can't shoot. So, they're done. And Markel Fultz, he, Markel Fultz also got traded. And I was going to say that brings the depth to the – uh. that's going to bring the depth back because they got two players that are quality bench players for Fultz. And I think the 76ers now are my – I think the 76ers are the only team that could give the Warriors a, a six-game, seven-game series. I don't know. I still think they're going to probably end up losing the East somehow, somehow, some way. They they're, won't. They'll, they'll say trust it. the process the next couple of years. What trade do you like, Matt? Any others that stood out? I know you like the Harris trade as well. Yeah, I like the Harris trade. I like the Nikola Miritich trade to the Bucks. I think the Bucks are going all in for the East too. 
I mean, they scored 50 yeah. points in the first quarter yesterday, bro. I mean, nobody's going to stop Giannis, so. Giannis, Middleton all out there sniping. Yeah. They got a little squad in If Milwaukee. they're on, you got to watch out, son. They'll put up two. They many. got the best record in the NBA, better than the Warriors. I'm not surprised. Yep. But they are out east. So, a trade I liked. I liked the uh, Gasol trade to the Raptors. Memphis decided to stick with Conley, but release Gasol on an expiring contract. I think it was a good move for the Raptors. Added a center what they needed. A good rim protector and an all-around good player for being as old as he is. So, I like the Gasol trade, and I think that boosted Raptors to number one in the East. I still got them over the 76ers in our top five, which we'll give in a second. But I really like that trade, and I also like the trade from last week that we've been knowing about. Porzingis to the Mavericks. I think he's going to end up staying and transitioning with Donich into a really good player and maybe even a Western Conference contender with a couple more good picks. There's a chance they get a, a good lottery pick this year, I think. Uh. They also they're saying their main target in the all seasons, Nik Nikol Vucevic from Orlando, the center. Yeah, he's all right. Yeah, he averages twenty two and fourteen. He's pretty good. Yeah, that is good. Very good. So any other trades you want to know? I mean, also, your Lakers. You got to give what they did. They I like the Lakers. Lakers fan. Shout out to my I boy really, Richie. I really, uh, being a Lakers fan, really a LeBron fan. I follow LeBron where he goes. For future reference, when LeBron's done with LA, I'll be a OKC Thunder fan. Because I don't know, I don't know why. I just I have always liked OKC, and I can't stand Kevin Durant, and that boy done him wrong. So it's more reason to like him. But the Reggie Bullock trade, I thought they got Reggie Bullock for nothing. He's got an expiring contract, which they won't. And then they got Mike Muscala. Who was shipped from Philadelphia to the Clippers to the Lakers? So I don't know. I think the Clippers, the Clippers were probably real winners of the trade deadline. They got their center for the future, Zubak. They got rid of Harris's contract because he's going to be wanting a max after the season. And then they just got more depth, really. And they got more money, saved yep. more money. Yep. Cause They're beefing up trying to get whoever Lakers don't land, I think. <laughs> Davis said that he would love to play for them. Clay Thompson has said either team out of L.A. Who else? Uh, Kawhi has said he would love to be a Clipper as well. I don't Everybody know why. Anybody that would like to go to the Lakers would also like to go to the Clippers for whatever reason. I don't know why. They just want to live in L.A., I guess. They I don't know why that the celebrities. The Clippers didn't try to trade Tobias Harris for Anthony Davis. Like Harris, maybe Harris, Beverly, and Boban Bombanovic for... I would not have took that for Anthony Davis. Yeah, but you're getting you're getting Harris who can re-sign with you. If he likes New Orleans, you got two stars again. Boy, they would have bonked game New Orleans if they did that. New Orleans is obviously too smart if they didn't take what they took. I, for one, would have took what Lakers counter offered. That was just so much. It was their whole team. It was Ball, Ingram, Kuzma, Stevenson, and Rondo, and two first-rounders. I think they even went four first-rounders with all of those. You know why they waited? Cause They're Ball, waiting on the Celtics to uh, screw them over, probably. They said the Celtics are willing to trade them anybody they want. They just have to wait, including Tatum. See, but then Anthony Davis' dad goes out and says he doesn't want him being a Celtic, all this stuff. So, you also got to worry if you're another team aside from L.A. getting Davis. You don't want a drama queen. But, all right, that was it on most of the big trades. We also got the All-Star game coming up in the next week. East versus West, I'm obviously going to go with the West. Or is it? No, it's, it's, it's a yeah, draft. Yeah, I keep forgetting it's a draft. So, who's your captains, LeBron and uh, Giannis? Giannis? Giannis is going to go with Curry. I already know he's going to take him at one. So, I don't know from there. LeBron going to go KD get, LeBron actually gets first pick. Okay, LeBron's still going KD then. No, he's going Kawhi. Really? He's going to go Kawhi. This boy's going to pick the team that he wants as his team and be like, all right, guys, let's go out there and play series in the All-Star game and see what we're going to be like. It's going to be LeBron, Kawhi, AD. Kyrie. 
Yeah, and Kyrie all on the squad. Here's why he's going to pick. See, LeBron ain't dumb. He's trying to win the All-Star game. Here's why he's going to pick the way he's going to pick. He picks he picks Kawhi, number one overall pick. He he makes Kawhi feel like, okay, LeBron really appreciates me. Then, Giannis already said he's taking Curry number one overall because Curry took him number one overall. Boom, LeBron's going to end up with LeBron, Durant, and Kawhi on the All-Star team together. I could see that happening. I think Giannis is going to go with a shooter group, a sniper group, if LeBron does that. He's going to get all the best snipers available. He'll get Curry and Harden, or should I say Harden and Curry at this point. No, you should say Curry. And then we'll see Embiid Embiid team up with Giannis as well. Maybe Kimball Walker. That's going to be some action over there on that team. That's a good squad. Quick, quick little something. Last night. Giannis three of three from three. Three point range. They scored one fifty. Just think when he can shoot threes and hit, and they have to defend that. Nobody can defend it. It's they like won't. trying to defend and beat now he's saying Yeah, way. and LeBron too. That's the future of the bigs and cousins. LeBron LeBron was the first like the first person that was that big, that fast, that strong. <laughs> We're talking bigs and us. LeBron too. <laughs> This is nothing new for LeBron. My whole childhood was watching LeBron hit 40-foot three-pointers from the sea in Cavaliers Stadium. So this ain't nothing new. We're talking bigs here. We're talking centers and big forwards shooting three-pointers is the future. Yeah. If Giannis can hit 35% from three, they'll average 120 a game. They already average almost 120 a game probably. As we mentioned, best team in the East. But aside from that, best team in the league record-wise, my NBA top five does not include them, surprisingly. So we'll all give our top five real quick, and I'll start it off. I got mine right here. Warriors, number one. They're just them guys. They're going to win it. Who I have potentially matching up with the Warriors out of the East. Raptors, number two. Number three, Rockets. Got to give it to them. Better than the Sixers. Better than the Lakers. Better than anybody else in the West. So, Rockets at three no matter what. 76ers at four. And my five spot is probably not going to be any of your five spots. I doubt it. I got the Thunder in my five spot. Over the Bucks, over the the Lakers. So, what you got, Matt? You got your five ready to roll? Oh, yeah. I got the Warriors, the Warriors, the Warriors, the Warriors, and the Warriors. (laughs) It's not even close. I think I really think they could sweep all the way to the West uh, Finals. All right. So what is your five though, really? All right, Warriors. You could, we'll limit you to put Warriors twice. No. No, I'm kidding. Man, I like the Seventy Sixers at two. I like that trade. I really do. This boy Matt's up five hundred plus bucks. Freaking been on a tear betting. And this boy's like, yeah, I'm riding the Sixers now every game. Nah. We'll see bad. I'm Little riding the Thunder, though. 76 Sixers jersey over here. Nah. Hey. Matt will have a Ben Simmons jersey. Then I got the Raptors at three. I got the Thunder at four. And then the Rockets at five. I don't like the Rockets, dude. I don't think it'll hold up in the playoffs. Stop it. I don't, th- I don't think it's going to hold up, but they'll be there. Nah. They'll give Warriors hell. Y'all ready? They'll beat the Lakers in seven. Y'all ready? Stop They'll it. beat the Thunder. Warriors, Thunder, Lakers, Sixers, Raptors. So Rockets, nobody included Rockets the six. Nobody included the Bucks, who are the number one record in the league. We just don't think they're ready, is what I concluded from that. I'll take that back. I'll take that back. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Raptors even out of the top five and Bucks in, dude. Only because the Bucks took the Celtics to seven last year. The Celtics had home court advantage, so maybe they really are good. It's not just the record, dude. Due to the no, cause no nah, Raptors stay in five. Bucks you're out. Lakers at three. <laughs> Lakers at three just because LeBron. Thunder at two though. So we're all high on Thunder this year. Hey, oh, yeah, PG they got for stars. MVP. They got stars. Paul George for MVP. 100%. PG for MVP. Bro, James Harden is winning the MVP by a long Dude, shot. He's going to win. but Unanimous. Any other year, you know who we'd be talking about? PG 
and Steph Curry. Both are having MVP type of years, and you don't even realize because Harden's just so above average this year. So, alien. Oh, no. He can't shoot for it. Save his life. Huh? Hey, Y'all say that hard. when he's like 7 of 20. But Dude, the next no, night he's freaking 13 like of 21. Of and y'all 30. are like, blah, 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 blah. He's not good. He scores 30 a night Dude, no matter what. And he has 35 wins. They have the, what are they, third in the West? They're going to end good. up being, they're going to end up being second. I, Nuggets are going to fall. I just, man, I. I just want Rockets Le- are still the Rockets. I just want LeBron to get them little tic tac foul calls at Harden. Get see how many see how much how many points he's. LeBron scores. don't get him because he's a crybaby. He throws his arms around. You're talking about James Harden, the dude that can't deal with somebody bumping him. I watched a video. It said how to play defense on James Harden, and it was like regular season versus postseason. Literally, they played the exact same defense last year. The Jazz got called for fouls the whole time. Literally, they were beating Harden up in the playoffs, and they would not call a foul. That's why they can't win in the playoffs. They'll call it this year. They'll run as one. That's their cheesy little Patriots motto, like you always say. Rockets will run as one. That's their motto. So, they're just... Whose motto? They're just on James Harden's head. That's Rockets motto, team motto. Run as one. (laughs) So, they run as one. It runs through Harden. He's by himself. (laughs) <laughs> They're going to do their thing. I can't believe that was their motto. I thought it was so ironic. Run is one. Yeah, Harden looks like that dude that would sit down during the national anthem if he could. Nah, that's your boy Marshawn Lynch, your favorite player in the league up until you became a Brady fan three years ago. Yeah, I can't like somebody like that. That's why I stopped liking the Seahawks. They made everything out to be racial and political, and I couldn't deal with it anymore. Okay, so the Steve Harvey bit the other day wasn't really racial, but it was – directed towards a lot of that but it was hilarious i loved it it was so funny and so good so y'all need to go check that out and anybody got anything on the mlb as we exit in rule changes dh we need a universal dh yeah i agree with the universal dh what other rule changes are up on the ballot uh up? minimal uh three three batter minimal for pitchers I they're saying that one with that they're I think saying a that pitcher, i think a pitcher should be able to come in for one out like a lefty on lefty matchup, whatever you want. They're saying three pitch, but I three pitch I read or three the, batter, three batter, and I read that the that the players are countering with a two batter proposal. I'd be okay with a two batter proposal, but still, usually you think, it's matchup based when they do that. You think in the postseason we see like four different pitchers per inning? I even think this should be a rule. They should let a pitcher pitch and then come back in to pitch. I think they should be able to do that. That wouldn't happen. Like the though. Yankees use one of their good relievers for two batters, and then they get a lefty up and want to swap him out for another, and then he could come back in in the eighth or ninth, whatever, and get another one or two outs. I think they yeah. should be able to do that with relievers only. Pitch clock 20 seconds. They changed it to 30 seconds last year, and it didn't really make a difference. I don't like the pitch clock. I think you should let the pitchers just go at their own pace. I don't watch enough games, full nine-inning games, to worry about that, really. Yeah, really, that, that's it. They got the Kyler Murray rule where you can't play multiple sports. and uh, Or you can't play a college sport while you're on a mo- pro roster. And there's just a bunch of little ticky-tack rules. You agree with that last one, Matt, or no? No, I think you should just let them play, really, and let them decide. If you, if you don't want your pick to go play NFL or basketball or whatever he's playing – then pick someone else. Either if pick you know somebody else or don't sign sport. him. Well, well, the thing was, he said he he signed his contract and said, I'm going to play college football for one year and, and I'm coming back. Baseball. Yeah. Signed his contract. What I want to know now is, does he owe him the money back? Uh, yeah, he owes him the money back. For sure. Maybe. Yeah. He owes them the money back. You think they're just going to lose five mil like that? Maybe. We're talking about the money ball athletics, bro. They ain't losing 50 cents. Yeah, I, like he he might still get his guarantee. No, nah, there's no guarantee. He's got to go do spring training at least to get that, and he's not. There's no guarantee on the table on that for sure. So that's it with the MLB. We'll wrap it up there. Like I told y'all, go check out that Steve Harvey bit on the NFL award show. It's hilarious. I remember what he said now about Tom Brady. He was like, we got all these athletes in here, 
millionaires, hundred millionaires, a lot of y'all, and y'all ain't ever thought about pulling y'all's money together and killing that damn Tom Brady. <laughs> and they all started laughing. And he was like, come on, I've even thought about doing it. <laughs> that was hilarious to me. But all right, guys, we'll see y'all next week. Quick shout out to our sponsors, Legend Gear. Legend Gear and Apparel at legendgear.co. Go check them out. The t-shirts are up. New hats coming also. A lot of other stuff. Use discount code LND10 for 10% off. Check out the newest page, Legend Wood and Artifacts. We got a lot of cool stuff going up on the site. A bunch of custom animal series knives, primitive knives, and artifacts. Y'all can check them out at legendwoodsman.com. Use the same discount code from Legend Gear there, LND10 for 10% off. We're shipping on all worldwide, so go get your products, and we'll see y'all next week. She wanna ride me like a cruise, and I'm not trying to